today in psychology the another cognitive process we are going to see that is a learning in previous lecture we have completed our sensation and perception so another cognitive process of our mind that is a learning so let's see what is learning so as the word suggest learning that means to learn something something new which we are gaining from the environment so that is the learning so this learning is a whole process learning is going to start from the birth stage only before the birth also in mother's womb the baby is going to learn so that is your learning process when we talk about this learning it starts from the very beginning stage of our life in all the individuals life we have the learning process on each and every stages of our life we learn something new things so that is our learning so we can say that this learning is a continuous process we starts learning from our childhood at the stage of our adulthood and the old age period so let's understand this learning further with the definition of this learning so here we have the definition of learning the term learning covers every modification in behavior why this learning is needed because we need to change we need to modify our behavior or someone else behavior so that modification in behavior by observing someone or by other ways what changes we are bringing in our own behavior that is that process is called as the learning process somehow we are modifying or we are changing our behavior so that is the modification in behavior to meet environmental requirement because all the times are not same the time is going to change uh, frequently so it is very uh, important to adjust in the current situation and current scenario so that's why the learning process is very important so that we can meet the environmental requirement what is required right now for an example that uh, right now currently the gadgets are very important to live our life so as per the requirement of the environment we are learning to operate our cell phones our computers other softwares and everything our social medias so that is called as learning with the change the to adjust in the particular environment or to adjust in the situation we are uh, modifying our behavior so that is called as the learning process so this definition of learning has been given by gardner murphy in 1968 after definition let's see the nature of learning how should be a learning or what actually a learning is so here we have some points in nature of learning that is learning is a process so as we have discussed in our introduction learning is a process that means it is not only one product that at a one time only that is going to happen the learning is a whole process which is going to take place in a very long way in a steps or in a channels we starts learning something from our childhood from our infancy to our old age period in all and every aspects of our life so that is called as a learning process the next nature of learning is it involves all those experiences and training of an individual so that means we learn from the experiences one thing we are observing we have experience and from that experience we are learning something new so that is the experiences and training of an individual that means this learning gives us a training that how something better we can do and we can implement in a better way next time so that is the training of an individual the actually learning provides the training to the individual or to our self so that is the nature of learning the another point is not always bring improvement or development in positive direction that means whenever we are learning something new it is not necessary that every time something good only we are learning or every time what we are learning that is for our positive development only so it is not like that sometimes by observations we observe someone some bad things also we learn so that is called as your maladaptive learning or maladaptive behavior what you have learned from the outside environment so that is 
so we can say that learning is not always there to improve our behavior sometimes uh, there can be the faulty learning or wrong things also we might be learned from the environment so that is after that learning prepares an individual for the necessary adjustment and adaptation so as we have discussed that current environment requirement that we want to meet up so that's why we are learning something new things so to adjust in the current situation or current scenario it is very important to learn so whenever we are learning the reason or a motive behind that learning process is to adjust in the current situation so that is the necessary adjustment and adaptation we need to accept something new situations or new things or new events in our life so that's why we are learning so that is all about the learning adaptation then the next point we have in our nature of learning that is learning is purposeful purposeful and goal orient, oriented so obviously the learning what we are going to carry out that is a purposeful process without purpose there won't be uh, any learning processes or the learning is not possible without purpose if i don't have any purpose to learn something new then why i'm going to learn something so that is so learning is always a purposeful thing as well as goal oriented we have a specific goal to learn something for an example in childhood the parents teaches the students uh, to eat and to sit properly or uh, to walk so these all the processes the children or the that particular baby are having some goals that yes in future they want to walk like us so that's why they are learning something they have the purpose that they can sit with us together and they can eat with a good manner so that is the purpose so always the learning is there with some purpose or, or it is a goal oriented activity without learning uh, without goal or without purposes there won't be any learning processes the another point is learning is a comprehensive process comprehensive process in the sense of it covers all the aspects of our life in all the areas of our life we learn something so that is so something socially we learn some spiritual things we learn some all the areas the comprehensive process it is in the sense of uh, some feelings and emotions that is our affect is also involved in the learning process at the same time some cognitive areas are also involved in this learning process so that's why we are saying that learning is a comprehensive process all the cognitive things as well as all the affective things are included in this learning process so that's why the learning is your comprehensive process the next point is universal and continuous universal in the sense of it is universally accepted in all the areas in all the countries and everywhere this a learning is accepted all the peoples those who are living the life on this earth they need to learn something in all the areas of their as life's aspect so that is it is a universal process at the same time it is a continuous process as we have discussed continuous starts from the infancy or our childhood to the old age so that is it is a continuous process uh, to meet the requirement of different age or growth and development we need the learning so that's why the learning is a continuous process the next point is learning is transferable from one situation to another that means whatever we have learned that is transferable from one situation to another situation we can implement that learn things in a different different situation so that's why the learning is a transferable the next point is learning helps in proper growth and development proper growth and development in the sense of we have taken the example of infancy and childhood period that the children are going to learn the walking the sitting and everything so that is required for their growth and development at the same time in different different age group and different different periods of our life we need to learn something new for an example when we are uh, in the higher secondary schools we need to learn the smartphones and everything when uh, the more update will be there we need to learn the computers or the softwares in today's life we need to learn some social medias and everything so that's why for the growth and development of the human being or individual the continuous learning process is required 
so that is learning helps in proper growth and development after that learning helps in balance development of personality to develop the personality of the individual also the learning is very important for development in our personality how to behave how to react in different different situation what to say and what to say these all the things we learn by observing something whatever we are today in our life that is the result of learning only somehow and somewhere we have learned from someone something all the things we have learned from someone some of the things we have learned from our parents some of the things we have learned from our teachers some of the things we have learned from some strangers by observing them so this is the learning so what we are today that is the result of the learning process there is no any one single thing the individual is doing by their own self all the things the individual are doing that is the learning only they have taken the help from something some object some things some events or some individuals and from all these things we learn so that is the nature of learning after the nature of learning we have types of learning so here are the different types of learning the stimulus response learning next is your perception learning then your verbal learning motor learning concept learning problem solving learning attitude learning and your paired associate learning so these are the different types of learning all these types one by one we are going to see in detail let's start with first one that is your stimulus response learning so the stimulus response learning stimulus that means any stimuli which is helping us to learn something the stimuli which is acting uh, which is active so that we can learn something from that so that is your stimulus on that stimulus on the basis of that stimulus what behavior we are exhibiting what response we are giving so that is the response so that is your stimulus response learning that means as a result of that stimulus any response we are giving to that particular stimulus so that is your stimulus response learning let's see this conditioning learning involves the conditioning of respondent behavior conditioning learning in the sense of to learn something someone is giving us some conditions they are giving some criteria that yes you do this things and you will get this so that is so to fulfill or to achieve that particular condition things what conditions are there to fulfill that conditions we are exhibiting our behavior so that is the condition learning so condition learning involves the conditioning of respondent behavior that means right now the learner who are, who is learning they are the respondent so what they are behaving that is the respondent behavior through a process of stimulus association and substitution stimulus association as the result of that stimulus what sub, what response we are giving so Uh, that is called as your substitute we are substituting by our behavior so that is so for that particular uh, stimulus we are giving our response so that is our substitution so that is called as your conditioning learning establishment of connection between sensory systems and motor systems so that is your stimulus response learning that means to establish some connection in our sensory system and the motor system for an example from the external stimuli from the environment with the help of external stimuli with the help of our sense organs we are sensing something and that information will pass to your brain then brain is again going to interpret this information and they are going to give meaning to your sensation and after the meaning of that sensation we are going to uh, give our response so that is your motor response so we have the sensory system and motor system connection while we are talking about this stimulus response learning so in this stimulus response learning we have two types of learning that is the first one is your classical conditioning and the another one is your instrumental conditioning so your classical conditioning is association between two stimuli 
So what is the two stimuli? The first one is your unconditioned stimulus and the second one is your conditioned stimulus. Unconditioned stimulus, that means a stimulus which is not giving us any conditions. They are not giving us any conditions to exhibit some behavior or to learn something. So that is your unconditioned stimulus. At the same time, Condition stimulus, that means they are giving us, they are providing or they are creating a situation of any conditions that yes, you do this and you will get this result. So, that is your condition stimulus. To achieve that condition stimulus, we are giving our behavior or we are exhibiting our behavior or what we are learning, that is the result of our condition stimulus. So, that is two things, unconditioned stimulus and the condition stimulus. So, Association between these two things are called as your classical conditioning. This stimulus response learning that we are going to see in detail in our principles of learning or theories of learning as well. So, at that time we are going to learn in learn these things in detail with the help of this Pavlov's classical conditioning theory, the dog and the uh, ring and the bell. So, that we are going to learn in detail in our principles or theories of learning. The another one thing is your instrumental conditioning. Instrumental conditioning is an association between a response and a stimulus allows an organism to adjust its behavior according to the consequences of that behavior. That means this is going to create some association, instrumental conditioning. That is, that is creating some association between a response and a stimulus. That what response we are giving and what stimulus is present outside the environment. Between that, one connection is going to be developed. So, that is called as your instrumental condition to adjust its behavior. So, based on that stimulus, we are giving response by adjusting our behavior. So, that is your instrumental conditioning. So, the example of instrumental conditioning is your reinforcement and punishment. Reinforcement in the sense of uh, to strengthening the ability of something in some specific area, we are giving them some benefits. So, that is called as strengthening of the abilities. So, that is called as your reinforcement. Sometimes reinforcement might be positive, sometimes it might be negative. So, that is your reinforcement and your punishment. Punishment we are giving to achieve specific behavior. For an example, we are uh, if the children are not getting the good marks in their exam, then we are giving them a punishment. So, in as a result of that punishment, in next exam, they are going to achieve a good marks. So, that is your punishment. So, that is the association between the response and the stimuli. So, that is called as your instrumental conditioning. So, this was about your stimulus response learning. As I told you that we will see in detail in our further points as well. That is the theories of your learning. The next type of learning is your perception learning. The second type of your learning that is your perception learning. Perception, already we have covered the perception. What is perception? We are receiving the information from the external environment. So, that is your sensation. With the help of sense organs, we are receiving the information. So, here are your sense organs and they are doing the function of this sight, hearing, touch, taste and smell. So, this five sense organ we have and they are doing this five sensory functions or experiences. So, they are receiving the information from the external environment. At the same time, that information what they have received, that is going to be passed in your brain and different areas of your brain is going to work for the interpretation of that perceived, received information or sense information and that your brain is going to give some meaning to that sensory experience that is called as your perception. So, that is your perception learning. Once you have observed something from the external stimuli with the help of, you have sensed something with the help of this all five sense organs and that sense organs, you have given meaning to that sense 
what you have sensed from your sensory experiences that is your perception and that what you have perceived by observing or by doing some activities from the external environment that you are storing in your mind and that we are learning so that is your perception learning the next is third type of learning that is your verbal learning verbal that means words we are going to use in this learning the through the communication pattern so that is your verbal learning so this type of verbal learning is going to take place in the formal education when the educational institutes are there so in verbal learning verbally spoken languages and words will be there so you can say in this image this girl is speaking something the communication process is called as your verbal learning we are learning this communications how to speak the languages we learn all the things we are learning so that is called as your verbal learning at the same time not only the verbal uh, languages or speaks or communications are called as this verbal learning but all the communications medias are also included in this verbal learning that is your laptop whether it is your telephone cell phones and everything so this is also the verbal learning with this all gadgets also we are implementing the verbal learning only at the same time some pictures some symbols all these things will be included in your verbal learning that is also part of your verbal learning for an example we are going to show the equation to the children and we are going to tell them yes this is the symbol of is equal to or this is the sim, uh, sim, uh, symbol of the multiply or this is the symbol of the division so these all the symbols whether it is a picture symbols all the things are going to be included in your verbal learning after your verbal learning the another type of learning we have that is our motor learning motor learning that means with the help of movement or with using your gross muscles the mus muscles of our whole body we are using so that is called as your motor learning for doing any activities or for learning something we are using our muscles so that is your motor learning so these all the activities you can see in this picture that is the example of your motor learning for an example this child is throwing the ball so that is the example of motor learning because in this activity also the muscles of the hands and legs will be used so that is the motor learning the next thing you can see in this image that is the swimming so for swimming also all the muscles of our body is going to be used so that is your motor learning the another image the third one you can see this child is learning to walk so that is also the motor learning because he has also observed someone uh, walking in that area and he is also trying to learn that walking so that he can walk freely by his own self so that is the learning so in this learning also he is using his muscles so that is your motor learning or this girl is playing the piano so in playing this piano also this motor learning is involved the movement of hands are there so this all are the included in your motor learning where we are using our muscles to do any activities or to learn something to adjust in the environment or to meet the requirement of that environment so that is called as your motor learning then the next fifth one type of your learning is your concept learning concept learning that means one idea or one concept we are forming for any thing any situation any event or any person so that is called as your concept learning one idea or a concept we are forming in our mind for a particular thing or situation or any object so that is called as a concept learning let's see this concept learning a concept is a form of mental image that denotes a generalized idea about things persons or events that means any image which is going to created in our brain after seeing or after speaking or after hearing about that particular things persons or events so that is called as the 
concept for an example right now someone will speak the name of any individual in front of uh, me and the whole image of that particular individual are going to be created in my mind and i'll think that yes this individual is very good he has a good skill of communication he is good in her personal life in professional life so that is called as the concept i'm going to give that image of that individual is going to create it into my mind and i'm going to uh, add or i'm going to gather some information about that particular individual by comparing the other things at the same time and I am going to create some idea about that particular individual. So that is called as your concept learning. So here we have taken the example of this car. For an example, already there is one car in your mind and someone will speak a name of any car. They will say the word car. That means that image of the car, what you have in your mind previously, that image is going to again come into your mind. Though that man has just told you the one word that is car, the, all the similarities and dissimilarities, what other cars you have shown in the uh, road, so that also will come into your mind and you will try to compare that information. So that is called as the concept learning. For an example, if I like the Jaguar car and the one will say the word car and in my mind there will be the whole picture of that Jaguar car with my favorite color that is white. So that will start initiating in my mind. So that is called as the concept learning. In other forms, in learning a concept, Individual tries to find out some common property in a group of object. For an example, the one has only told me the word car. So with that word car, all the other cars also are going to come into my mind and I am going to compare all these cars and what impression of this car or what is my likes of the car based on that i am going to create one concept that is this car so that is called as your concept learning that concept was already there in my mind and from that object for that object the other similarities dissimilarities other objects i have gathered and from that i have created one concept or idea about the car so that is called as your concept learning individual starts learning in abstract terms instead of the this so that is your abstract so individual starts learning in uh, learning in abstract terms that means what is already in their mind what thoughts or what things are already there in their mind so based on that that abstract they are going to start thinking and they are going to start creating their concept instead of the con concrete things which is actually there in the environment or in the presence so instead of that the individual will start creating their own concept based on the things what abstract they have in their mind so that is your concept learning. Next type that is your fifth one, sorry sixth one. So that is the another type of learning that is your problem solving learning. So name itself says problem solving learning. To solve our problem, what we are learning or what we are doing, that is called as a problem solving learning. For an example, we have one problematic situation. And to solve that problem, we are learning something or any activities we are doing. So that is called as your problem solving learning. So this type of problem solving learning, it is a higher type of learning because the higher mental functions are required for this problem solving learning. Higher mental functions in the sense of your all the cognitive abilities which is required to solve the problem that is your intelligence level, your uh, knowledge, your aptitude, your attitude, your memories and everything will start working together to solve that particular problem. So that is called as your cognitive abilities for problem solving learning. For an example, I am facing one issues in my life and to solve that particular problem, 
I am going to use, I am going to implement my memory that yes, one individual was also having this type of problem, what he has done in that situation, so that thing. Knowledge about that particular problem, so that is also going to come into that problem solving learning. Then my attitude, what is that problem, how I am considering that problem, that is the easiest or the worst problem, what I am not able to, which I am not able to going to solve it. So all these cognitive abilities, that is your knowledge, thinking power, memory, uh, this intelligence level, all the cognitive abilities which are the higher mental functions of our brain. So that all the things we are going to implement here in our problem solving learning. So that is your problem solving learning. The next type of learning is your attitude learning. Attitude learning that means the individual learns a subject based on his attitude towards the subject. For an example, one thing I have to learn which is unfavorable to me, so that is going to annoy me. I am not going to learn that very quickly or it won't be easy for me to learn that thing. So that is your attitude learning. Individual learns all the things based on their attitude. Our attitude is going to help us to learn or to avoid that learning process. So that is, that is your attitude learning. For an example, we have talked the favorable attitude and the unfavorable attitude. So if the favorable attitude is there, I am quickly going to learn something if the unfavorable attitude is there, I am not easily going to learn that particular things or a situation or event. So that is the attitude learning based on the favorable attitude and the unfavorable attitude. After that, the another type we have, eighth one that is your paired associate learning. Let's see what is this paired associate learning. Learning tasks are presented in such a way that they may be learned by reasons of their association. That means whatever we are going to learn, what things or what event or anything what we are going to learn in the current scenario, the individuals are having the tendency to correlate that particular things with the past experiences. So that is called as paired associate learnings. Any task which is presented, learning tasks are presented in a such a way that they may be learned by reasons of their association. We are going to associate them something. For an example, if someone will tell me the, uh, someone will tell me the, uh, someone will say the word Taj, Taj Mahal, at the same time, I am going to associate that Taj Mahal word with something else, that is Mumtaz and Sahajaha. So that is paired associate learning. For an example, anyone will say me the word Krishna or a name of Krishna, then uh, again I am going to remind that name of the Lord Krishna. So that is called as paired associate learning. What already things are there in our mind that we are going to implement in the current situation to remind or to memorize that particular thing. So that is called as your paired associate learning. So that all were the main types of learning. Apart from that other types of learning also we have. So these are the other types of learning that is your visual learning, your kinesthetic or we can say your touch learning and your auditory learning. So by with the help of our, this sense organ that is our eye, skin or our ears, we are going to learn something. The sense, this all the senses will allow us to learn something or to uh, get some sensory experience from the external stimuli and external environment at the same time we are going to give meaning to that external stimuli with the help of our perception with the help of interpretation of that information and that information we are going to store so that is called as your other types of learning for an example very first time uh, the individual has tasted the sweet thing uh, that might be the chocolate so at the same time when this again after some decades the again some same taste if the individual are going to taste and 
that time they can identify that yes this is the sweet taste of chocolate because already they have sensed these things in the previous time and they have stored this memory into the uh, brain so that is called as your other types of learning that is visual kinesthetic or auditory with the help of all this sense organs some of the uh, this type of visual uh, some of the learning things are like that which includes all the types the more than two or three types of learning for an example you can see this image the person is playing ch chess so while we are playing this chess all the other types of learning will be included in this that is your verbal learning will be included even your motor learning will be included even your intellectual level will be included so all the different types of learning are going to included in this type of activity so some of the activities or some of the learning process we have in which more than two or three uh, types of learning are going to be included so that all the things are about the types of learning after that next point we have learner and learning that means the basic criteria for learning the things how should be the learner and how should be the learning process so this is your learner and learning let's see so while we talk about this learner and learning the two areas we have the one is your cognitive faculties or we can say cognitive areas the another one we have that is your affective faculties so already we have discussed the cognitive that means in which uh, things our brain is going to be involved that is your memory or your attention or your intelligence level so that all the things are called as your cognitive functions at the same time the affective that means your mood or your uh, emotions or your feelings are going to be involved in that so that is called as your affective faculties so let's see how should be the cognitive faculties of the learner to learn something or how this cognitive faculties is associated with learner and learning so this cognitive faculties it includes five senses at the same time apart from this five senses this memory imagination and intellect let's see how it is related to each other the five senses the first one is your senses grasping different information so this in this learning process this senses is going to help the learner to sense something from the external environment so that is grasping different information by eyes the visual information we can grasp with the help of taste different taste we can grasp so that is the grasping of different information or gathering the information from our external environment with the help of external stimuli by using our sense organs so that is your senses so that is the cognitive faculties the next thing is your imagination Ima imagination that means that is going to be helpful for the formation of pictorial representation something uh, as the example we have given the of the concept learning the car word someone will say to us and all the pictorial image of that car is going to come into our mind so that is called as the imagination so this imagination is also associated with this learning process and this learner so for learner imagination cognitive function is also important because it is going to create some pictorial image so whenever some familiar word what already we have experienced that things will come or that words will come the immediately the past things related to or associated with that particular things are going to come into our mind so that is your imagination the next is your memory memory that means recall or retain post mental actions in mind so to recall or to uh, retain the memories of our post mental actions in our mind with the help of 
memory that we can do so that is called as your memory so this memory is also is going to be helpful for the learner to restore or to recall some past events for an example one has said the word car and all the past memories what we have seen in seen previously that has came into our mind suddenly so that is called as recall or retain post mental actions in mind through your memory and the last cognitive faculties is your intellect the higher intellectual process forming concepts or ideas and making judgment from the given information for that reason we need this intellectual functions learners should have the intellect functions they should have the ability to use their intellect their higher mental functions uh, of their brain so that is the intellectual things based on uh, using their own brains so that is so to form the concept to give the idea about the visualized things or any things so that is called as your intellectual process or to make a judgment for something for an example previously we have taken the example that someone will say uh, the word of any individual in front of me and my mind or my intellectual area is going to give judgment about that particular individual that yes he is good with the nature he has a good communication skills so that judgment i am giving so that is called as your intellectual things so whenever we want to learn something the learner should have the senses imaginations memory intellect and all these things are works like this so that is your cognitive faculties then next we have the affective faculties already we have discussed that affective faculties that means which is related to your feelings or emotions for an example happiness sadness uh, anxiety worry so that is your affective faculties your emotions or your feelings this includes feelings emotions and rational will will that means desire to achieve something so that is so that is your affective faculties feeling of being happy sad or angry can be felt by feeling or emotions so with this also this affective faculties is going to make us aware about with the help of this things we are going to learn about different different feelings and emotions that what things are there or what situations or events are there which makes us happier which makes us sad which makes us angry so that is the affective faculties identify and experience the real feeling about the things for an example one has shown us any event or any things and what is our feeling towards that particular things so that we are going to learn with the help of this affective faculties so learner should have this affective faculties that is the emotions the rational desire or as well as the feelings that yes one will show me the bike and my uh, emotions or my feelings what it will be towards that particular object or the situation so that is your affective faculties the next the using the rational will learner has the capacity to think and choose what is desirable according to his analysis that means rational will will or a desire to achieve something or any goals we have so we need to achieve that and based on that goal or based on that will or desire our behavior will be directed towards that so we are going to learn all the things in the area of achieving that particular thing or fulfilling that rational will so that is so the individual should have the capacity to think and choose what is desirable according to his analysis that means if i want to achieve or if i want to fulfill my rational will then what should be my behavior that analysis should be learned by the learner while we are learning something new so that is your affective faculties so that was all the things about your about learner and the learning so that is your cognitive faculties and the other thing we have that is our affective faculties the next point we have in learning that is our factors 
influencing learning factors influencing learning that means when the individuals are learning something to adjust in the environment or to adjust in the uh, current situations or scenario at that time some of the factors are there which are helping them to do it in a better way or which are uh, not allowing them to learn something effectively so that all the things are called as the factors which directly affects the learning process of the individual so if we talk about this factors of influencing learning at that time the first factor or first thing which will be there it is the learner by own himself the learner the another thing will come that is the man or material and the another thing will come that is the methodology or we can say this learning experiences so main these three things we have the first is learner will be affect uh, learner is going to affect that learning process the second thing the learning experience that means what we are learning and what is uh, in what situation we are learning so that is going to be affected and the another third thing that man and the material so this main three factors are there which is going to affect our learning process or which is going to influence our learning process so let's see all these three things one by one so the first thing is your physical and mental health for an example learner if i am the learner and i am learning something or right now you are the learner and you are learning something but you are not physically well if you have the high grade fever then your eyes are not going to work properly if your nutritional status is down you won't be able to see for a longer time of period you will be lethargic you will be fatigued and you won't be able to pay attention towards this lecture so all the time physical health of the learners are going to affect the learning process if the learner are physically healthy that time they will be able to learn something in a better way at the same time if the learner is physical physically disabled at that time also that is going to limit the learning process so that is all about your physical health at the same time the another one is your mental health mental health in the sense of if our mental state is not proper if mentally we are disturbed or confused at that time that will uh, lead some faulty learning process we won't be able to focus on our learning so that is the mental health for an example if we are stressed excessively stressed if we are anxious if we have fear of something so all these things if we have the lack of self confidence lack of self worth that all the things that mental things are going to affect our learning process so that is your mental health for an example little bit of stress and anxiety are needed for the constructive manner for the constructive learning if i want to learn something if i want to focus on my reading for my exams a little bit stress to pass out in that exam that is required but when the stress level will be high that is going to affect the learning process so that all the mental health has uh, mental health of the learner is going to affect the learning process the next factor of learner aspect area that is your basic potentials potentials that means the ability for an example if the learner is not having the abilities if the limitations are there in the learner that they are not able to learn something new so that also affects the strengthening abilities of the learner so that is going to affect the learning process strengths and the limitations of the learner is going to affect this learning process so that is your basic potentials in this basic potentials if the learner's intelligent quotient or intelligence level is not that much good if the knowledge of the learner is not that much good so at that time also that is going to affect that learning process so that is some basic potentials which is required for the learning process that is intelligence level of the learner or knowledge of the learner the background of the learner so that all the things are required so that strength and limitations of the learners that is your basic potentials are going to affect the learning process the next is motivation and goals so if we talk about motivation 
when we have some motivations or motives to do any activities at that time this learning process will be easy same thing like motives if we have any goals short term goals or long term goals if we have any goals in our mind at that time the learning process is going to be easy and the learners are going to learn something quickly for an example motivations in that if i have the motive to pass my examination so for that examination passing purpose i am going to focus on my studies i am going to read and i am going to memorize all these things and that will facilitate a good learning process for me so that is my motivation and goals if we have a strong goals at that time this learning process will be easy and smooth the next is readiness and will power readiness and will power when we have any desire uh when we have any desire to achieve something when we are ready to learn something by our own uh, own side without any external force or without any force from the others at that time it will be easy for us to learn something for an example if my mother will daily tell me uh that yes please read read sit and read sit and read for your exam i am not going to learn something good that will be only force for me but with my own choices if i am going to read something i I'll, i'll decide to read and if i am reading something that time the learning process will be easy and i uh, i'll be it will be easy for me to memorize all that thing so that is the readiness and will power if the will power is strong if the learner is ready by his own self at that time the learning process is going to be easy the next is maturation maturation in the sense of uh, the growth of that particular individuals if what learner is there and the growth of the learner is facilitating or telling him to learn something so that is with the maturation for an example in infancy infancy period we, uh, the learner was not having that much uh, uh, that much things or that much uh, requirement of learning too much things just basic needs satisfaction was enough for them but at the growth uh, by age by age the learning things are very important for an example they are going to observe someone walking sitting and they will also think to do all these things so that with the age group or with the progressive maturation the learner are going to learn something new so that will facilitate the learning and last is your age and sex so for an example age how age is going to affect the learning process if right now in adolescence or adulthood period if someone is going to teach us something or we are going to learn something uh, then it will be quick process for us at the same time if the old aged people if they will try to learn something it will be difficult for them because all their sense organs are diminished at that age period and because of that diminished uh, sense organs or sensory experiences it is very difficult for them to learn something so this is how this age and sex also affects the learning process so these all are the factors which are associated at the learners aspect for the learning process after that another factors we have that is your factors associated with type of learning experience type of learning experience that means learning situations and what we are going to learn so in that the one thing we have that is your nature of learning experience that what we are going to give uh, what we are going to learn is a pleasurable to us or it is giving pain to us so that nature of learning experience also affects the learning process the next is methodology of learning which methods are going to be used for learning so that methods of learning what materials will be used for the learning process so that all the things for an example in classroom uh, if students are learning something if they are getting a good avids good 
uh, audio visual aids good uh, video clip for that particular uh, teaching topic or they are getting a good content so all that methodology what methods we are using to teach them all these things will facilitate a good learning in them uh, in the students so that is the methodology of learning what methods we are going to use for our teaching or what method students are going to adapt for the learning so that is also affects then next is meaningfulness of material what material we are using for the learning process how meaningful that it is so based on that meaningfulness of that material our learning process are going to be affected so all the times what materials we are using for the learning process that should be a meaningful the unnecessary materials we need to avoid it and the meaningful things which is giving some meaning to that learning uh, which uh, which is helpful for us to learn so that type of meaningful things all the times we should learn which we can implement in further aspect of our life so that is meaningfulness of material the next is amount or length of material in what quantity we have the material to learn something so that amount of material and for how longer time of period we have that material so that is uh, that also affects a learning process so that is also important for our learning experiences that proper amount or a larger amount of material will facilitate a good learning compared to the lesser amount so the amount of the material at the same time for a longer time of period if we have the material that is going to be facilitate a good learning process so that all are the factors associated with type of learning experience the learning experience how it will be facilitated so that is the factors all these things are going to affect our learning experience the next thing we have that is factors associated with man and material man that means uh, who is teaching us or from whom we are learning something so that man and material or resources we can say in terms of man and material if we have the enough resources we are going to learn something in a good way so that is so the first factor in man and material is your quality of teaching who is teaching if that man is a good in teaching that obviously uh, our learning process will be easy if they are teaching very actively and students also will be able to gain some interest in the teaching activity so the learning process will be easy for the students so that quality of teaching is going to affect the learning experience at the same time learning material from what material someone is teaching to us or what material we are using to learn something if that material is very attractive then also the learning process is going to be easy so that learning material then next is textbooks what textbooks we are going to use if all the things are given very carefully in the textbooks with point and everything so that will be easy for us to learn from that particular textbook at the same time in other textbook everything is given very lengthy haphazardly so many points and so many contents are there which we are not able to understand it will make us uh, in it will put us in difficulty to learn something in a good way so that is next is teaching learning aids what teaching learning aids our teacher is using or what teaching learning aids we are using to learn something so that is also if very creative and very effective uh, teaching learning aids has been used then it will gain the interest of the students or the learners at the same time if the material or teaching learning aids which are used that is not properly visible the words are not properly visible the pictures what is taken in that things that is also not a self explanatory that at that time this learning process will be difficult for the learners the next is library and laboratory facilities if the students are having a good library facilities and laboratory facilities in library all the resources of books and everything are there the journals are there some articles are there 
so it will be easy for them to learn if laboratory is well equipped all the dummies and everything is there in that lab all the solutions if it is a biochemistry labs or something like that biology lab so all these things so if the laboratory is well equipped then it will be easy for students to learn something for an example to teach any procedure in nursing in fon lab if we don't have the proper equipment for an example if we want to do the uh, physical examination and we don't have this uh, tuning fork or we don't have this nasal speculum or we don't have this proctoscope it will lead to the difficulty in learning so that is so when all the resources are sufficient and in proper amount and in working condition that is going to give a good learning experience to the learner the next is conductive environment conductive environment that means uh, environment which is going to be helpful for us to learn something new things so that is conductive environment not the destructive environment destructive environment is going to distract us from our learning process but the conductive environment will help us to learn something for conductive environment if we have a good chairs good seat to seat a uh, good source of lights or projectors so at that time all these things are going to facilitate a good learning so that all the things will be included in this man and material so if all these things are sufficient and adequately and in a good working condition we can learn something very quickly then so these all are the factors influencing your learning process after that we have laws of learning laws of learning or we can say the principle of learning psychologist has given some laws or principles that how learning can be effective how easily someone can learn so here are some principles that how should be a learning or on what laws a learning should be done so that is the laws of learning the first law is law of readiness as we have discussed previously law of readiness that means individuals readiness or a preparedness for learning something new their interest in learning process so that is your readiness if the individual is ready by themselves to learn something the learning process is going to be easy so that is let's see or let's let's understand this one by one some sort of preparatory attitude or a mindset is necessary for an example i am ready right now to learn something new i have already prepared my mind that yes i want to learn or i want to focus on my study it will be easy for me to learn something and also to memorize that things what i have learned so that will be easy for me so always readiness in the sense of our favorable attitude towards the learning things should be there then and then only we are going to learn something we are going to achieve a good learning process or good learning experience so preparatory attitude and a mindset is very important while we need to achieve a good learning experience if nervous pathway is ready for action the response quickly follow nervous pathway in the sense of the first thing uh, we have learned that sensory stimuli is going to sensory receptors are going to pass the message to our brain and in response the brain is giving the response so that whole pathway so that is your sensory and motor pathway that both the pathway are ready and prepared then they can work very actively let's understand this by the example before that let's see this last points as well the learner's reaction depends upon the readiness of the sensory and the motor neurons that means 
when are both sensory neurons at the same time the motor neurons both the neurons are ready at that time this learning experience is going to be very good or a very excellent or a very quick why because sensory neurons are ready so they are going to receive the signals very quickly and very quickly they are going to pass this information towards our central nervous system and from the central nervous system the motor response will also be passed very quickly as a result whole process are going to be very quick very easy so that's why the learner's readiness facilitates the activation of the sensory as well as the motor response for an example if we talk that i want to read something or an learner want to read something for the if during whole for an example all the individuals are experiencing the same thing whole year we are studying but we are not able to uh, store this things or memorize this things in our brain while we are studying something we are not able to memorize the things but this same things though it is very lengthy though too much things or too much syllabus are there the whole subject is there to read when we will start reading before the day of examination it will be easy for us to memorize all these things or to capture capture all these things or to memorize all these things in our brain the reason is at that time we are reading by our interest and that is our readiness which are making us prepared to receive some information so our sensory neurons are going to be activated at the same time our motor neurons are activated and all the informations are going to be stored very quickly in our brain so that is the example when students read before the day of examination it will be easy for them to complete whole syllabus because because very quickly they are able to store all these things in their memory power because they are already prepared and because of their preparedness or readiness their whole sensory systems are working very actively so that is the thing so that is the law of readiness next is another law for learning that is your law of effect law of effect that means after learning something what effect we are getting if we are getting a good effect that means our learning process will be interesting or again in a next time uh, we will be very active to learn something if we are not getting a good effect of that learning process we are not again going to learn that particular thing so that is the law of effect let's see this a successful reaction gives satisfaction to the individual and the same reaction tends to be repeated for an example i have learned something and that learn thing has given me a pleasurable or a good sense pleasurable sense it has given me so if it is giving me a good feeling or a good sense that time i again i will be think or again i will be provoked to repeat that learning process uh, repeat that learning process or to to do that same activity again and again so that is called as repetition with the help of this effect because that learning experience has given me the pleasant effect or a feeling of goodness so that is at the same time an unsuccessful reaction gives annoyance to the individual and tends to be inhibited if the learning process was not successful so obviously that is going to annoy us we will dissatisfied by that learning process because that is giving us not a pleasure but it is giving us a sadness sad feeling it is giving us so if we are not going to feel good with that learning process then in next time we are not going to learn that thing again so that is the law of effect when we get something good things uh, when we get a good result of that learning experience at that time we are going to repeat that things so that is the law of effect the next is law of exercise or use exercise in the sense of repetition of that particular things we are uh, repeating that uh, learning experience or we are using that more and more 
so that is the law of exercise or use native reactions are strengthened by practice so as in our day to day life we say is that practice makes man perfect likewise when we are repeating the same things or same learning experience or same activity at that time we will be more practiced in doing that activity and in next time it will be very quick and easy for us to do that particular activity so the practice makes man perfect likewise the repetition of that particular activity the repeated exercise or repeated doing of that particular activities are going to make this learning process very quick and very easy so that is called as your law of exercise or law of use the next is law of frequency law of frequency is also associated with your law of use or law of exercise for an example the more frequently a connection is exercised the stronger the connection becomes one thing if we are repeating once at that time the learning experience was good again we are repeating that same thing in a second time again that same thing we are repeating in a third time then again in fourth time so as we are repeating that same thing again and again it becomes a more stronger so it becomes a more in a interesting or a good way so that is called as a law of frequency when the frequency will be increased from 1 2 3 4 that is going to give us a more and more satisfaction at the same time we will be more practiced in that particular activity and that is going to be the stronger thing our abilities will be strengthened in that particular area so that is your law of frequency in learning the next is law of disuse that means since prolonged period of time if we are not utilizing that learning experiences what we have learned once so that we are if not repeating it or we are not learning uh, we are not practicing it in our day to day life then that will become a, a decade or that learned things won't be uh, useful for us in the future time so that is your law of disuse any learning process which is not practiced for some time gradually decays for an example i am uh, i am in this nursing profession i have already learned to give intravenous injection but after that learning experience of that intravenous injection giving intravenous injection if i am not practicing this things and after one year two year or after some time of period my that practice will be lost and whatever i have learned i am going to forget that so that is kind of junk to that learn things that is going to become decay that is uh, that won't be more useful for me that learning experience so that is called as your law of disuse when we, when we are not using or when we are not practicing our learn things at that time it is going to be decay so that is your law of disuse the next is law of recency recency that means the recently what we have done in very short time of period so that is the more recent is the exercise this law of recency is also in association with the frequency in, and in the association with the law of exercise only the more recent is the exercise the stronger is the connection between the stimu- situation and the response the any activity or anything which we have just has uh, just we have done it that will be easy for us to do it again so that is your law of recency what is the thing what we have learned just now before one or two days or before very short during before very short time of period again it will be easy for us to implement or to practice that same thing in a short duration so that is the law of recency the next is law of primacy 
that means primarily what things we have experienced what we have learned that will be the everlasting or long lasting experience for us the in uh, in a very first time what we have done something that will be the everlasting thing for us so that is your law of primacy the first experiences and acts are novel and appropriate to attract attention that means the first experiences very first time what we have experienced or what we have seen that is going to be new to us something new what we have experienced so that is the novel and appropriate to attract attention so that is quickly going to uh, achieve our attention so that is law of primacy for an example uh, to solve the puzzle what first step we have taken in solving that puzzle so that is the first thing primarily thing what we have done so that will be memorized or that will be stored in our brain for a longer time of period or forever so that is the law of primacy or what friend we have made in a very first day of our school or what a new teacher we have seen in our school so that is law of primacy that we are going to be remembered for a longer time of period for an example our first school so all the things which are first to us which is new to us which is novel to us so that will stay in our memory for a longer time of period so that is the law of primacy then next law in learning we have that is our law of purpose when we have any purpose to learn something at that time that learning process is going to be effective as we have discussed that without purpose the learning process is not possible so when we talk about this law of purpose it is very important to have a definite goal in our mind while we are learning something so with a clear or a definite goal in mind the student works towards a definite purpose that means whenever we want to do any learning activity at that time we should have a clear vision or we should have a clear definite goal in our mind that what we need to achieve what is our purpose why we are doing this particular activity so at that time our learning process will be very quick and very easy for an example this uh, learner is the student and if he want to achieve a first rank in the final examination so he has the purpose at the same time he has the definite goal or definite purpose so it will be easy for him to learn something so that learning process is very quickly and very smooth for him so that is the law of purpose then next law and very last law we have that is law of association so law of association that means it is on the basis of association of ideas we can explain how one idea gives way to another and so on that means what one idea we have in our mind that is already the result of association of the previous idea what we were we have experienced in the past decades so that is called as your law of association so as earlier we have discussed someone has said a word taj mahal then we have associated that taj mahal with the marble stones or with the mumtaz or sahajaha so that is called as law of association because it was already there in our mind and we have associated that past things in the current situation or current scenario so that is called as law of association or we can say law of similarities so this is your law of learnings so today we have completed the learning process in that definitions we have completed the factors influencing learning we have completed methods of learning and types of learning and law of association we have completed so that is all about your learning process next we will see the theories or uh, principles of learning process we can say